Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. I'm Tom Dorsey, and this week we're going to be talking about uh, how to manage your interrupts in your day, how to stop dropping that ball from all those tasks that you're juggling uh, all the time. And as always, I've got my expert panel of experts, Bill Connor and Uva Kleinschmidt joining us. And uh, welcome, gentlemen. And we're really excited to have on uh, Mike Holmes from Holmes Auto Repair, who's coming in as a turbo shop, right? Somebody who's been kind of behind the scenes helping, uh, working with Bill and Uva and uh, Carlo Iturralde and all the other turbo shops that are helping us to kind of develop some of these, uh, you know, new functionalities that are coming out for you. And uh, Task Manager is one of those that helps us to keep those balls in the air, reduce the amount of balls actually that we need to focus on, let the, let the machine focus on the next steps while you focus on the customer and your goal, which is to provide better service and make more money. So welcome, 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 Mike Holmes. It's been a long time, buddy. Great to see you. Yes, thank you. It has. I think it uh, was first of the year when we were at the conference. Yes, yeah, we were at conference last time I saw you. A lot of things. Man, time changed. flies, buddy. Time yes, flies, I'll tell you what, especially in COVID times. You know, I was just talking with folks out before the show, and it's hard to believe it's coming up on August, you know. Uh, kids are going back to school in a couple of weeks, you know. Yeah, we hope so. We hope so. <laughs> yeah, we hope so. Yeah, exactly. Depends on where you live, I guess. That's but um, let's jump right into it. Uh, you know, we've got um, uh, some pretty uh, some pretty good information to share with you today and we really kind of want to focus on kind of the how to so that we you know when folks are coming uh you know able to get onto the new tvpx mic they're they're able to kind of jump in on some of those um you know real good time savers and efficiency tools that you've uh, kind of been privy to here over the last few months uh how's that been working out for you what let me ask you this what do you think from what you've been working on and uh, the things that, uh, you know, as it starts to kind of get you know, used regularly in the shop um, from, a, from the task manager perspective, how has that been helping you guys at the front counter? Well, you know, it, it boils back to if you can, can take it out of your mind and write it down. <laughs> yeah. Brings up a little room for the other and, and you're not so apt to forget it. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a new process. You know, there, we've all had different processes and ways we use post-it notes, wonder lists and stuff like that. But when you can integrate it like this, you know, it's definitely going to be a time saver. Uh, you, you don't want to forget anything. If you forget one thing, it's going to be the wrong one no matter what. You know? So there, there, there's definitely a, a great benefit to it. And, and I can see a lot of room for additions, different ways we can use it. Uh, I've even been playing with the uh, team viewer and using it on my iPhone, trying to add other tasks, you know, for my personal, that way uh, you don't have but one place to go. Yeah. And for folks, you know, you know, I, I should probably uh, tell them what we're talking about a little bit for folks who haven't seen some of the previous episodes where we've been talking about task manager basically takes all of your inbound kind of activities and actions, right? Technician submits an inspection sheet, you know, and, and in the current uh, today's vehicle page, you'll get a notification, and you, know, you can kind of scroll through and find that stuff if you dig for it. Um, and you know, even customer communications inbound, even website, you know, appointment request type, uh, or I should say, um, appointment reminder, uh, appointment requests come in as messages, and those become automated tasks. And so, what Mike was saying, instead of kind of you know downloading it out of your head and we're used to writing it maybe on a post-it note or updating a whiteboard and stuff. This will automatically create a task for you. It's called the task manager. And you can find, you know, there's some great videos that are posted up on help.autovitals and, uh, you know, online. And um, uh, looks like, and we've got, Bill is going to show us. Bill, why don't we just go ahead and, and uh, take a look at what you're showing there so we can give folks uh, an overview of, of the task manager real quick. And so, Mike, is it okay to go ahead and share a screen of your shop? Absolutely. I was going to say the correct response is yes. Oh, I've already got it on that because I picked you up. Oh, yeah. So there you go. So there you go. So this is a, a task that has actually come in and it's actually in the um, message here. So it, it first comes in as a message from the technician. And then if the service writer misses that, 
then they're going to be able to go ahead and pull it up as a, a task to go ahead and go through also. So if I could ever figure out where my mouse went on one of my many monitors. And so this is what it looks like as it comes in from the monitor or from the technician and down in the lower right hand corner is a task. And then if the service writer misses that, there's no way they can miss it completely because it's going to still go ahead and show up in this list as a task for them to do. And then it's broken down into parts. So that's the basic gist of it. And, um, you know, we can talk about, you know, the benefits to the shop and so on. But to me, this is all about, you know, there's time savings because you can't miss anything. But the really the time savings comes in is when you don't go ahead and create fires that you have to put out and then go ahead and rebuild whatever got burnt in the process. So, um, you know, having it all in one place is great, but going in and preventing fires and save the time for having to patch that relationship with a customer or whatever it might be is really kind of huge. Yeah, sure. And, and it's kind of like, you know, the time it takes to write it down, the time it takes to rewrite it down, the time it takes to edit it when you get more information, the time it takes to find that post-it note wherever it got buried. Um, you know, all of that is kind of, is also, an, you know, an added time savings. And then just the ability to, and, and you can reprioritize those tasks right there. You just drag them into proper order. And when you complete the activity, let's say the task is edit the inspection results, you go in and do the edit and it's the edit is done. It's going to automatically go in and complete that task for you. It's not going to make you go back in and, and check it off. So, uh, and there's one other thing that's really good about that also is let's say that a task has got four different elements of it and the service writer gets interrupted at step number two, they go back into that task and it's going to say, okay, now take off from here. Yes. Yes. That's fantastic. No, and as, as well, you can also assign that task to someone else. If it's, uh, you know, something somebody else should handle, you can just, just, just click it and it, it's gone to them. And there's also methods to go back and see if they've completed it, if you need to check up on it or curious to where they are at in that task. Um, I agree. Yep. We're right on the verge of going to the production manager and trying to uh, get all get the processes worked out. And I think the benefit we see there when we when we do implement that is going to really show show the the opportunities that you have with that. Yeah, because that's where it's going to really shine because it's more of you know it's a great management tool, project management tool, right? And that's really what your pro, your pro, production manager is going to be doing. So, so Mike, when uh, because it's one of those things, right? It, it, when you're on TVPX, it's going to be there. It's going to be working in the background. If you never open that button up and ever look at it, you know, okay. But it's going to benefit you if you do. How was it for your service advisors to kind of, you know, start to use the task manager? Was there a learning curve to it or did they just take to it like fish to water? Well, no, there's always a learning curve to change. You know, and, and sometimes you got to get past the, the change is difficult because there's usually a benefit to it. And, and, and we struggle like all other places. And, you know, we work through, we get certain bugs and certain procedures and way we want to do things because you know we're we don't operate like every other shop you know we don't break our service manager stuff and stuff like that but it it's definitely where you can customize it and use it in your facility to fit your particular procedures and 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 it's very i'd call it tweakable ah, yes. you, you can uh you can use certain things and you can you know I, I can just see there's so many things that we're going to be able to do with it and so many things that we've already changed. You know, it was very good about recommendations or where we don't like this or didn't work of, of implementing those if it was a benefit and it wasn't going to take away from the original thought of the task. Yeah. Yeah. It was like we were talking about last week, you know, it was really, you know, when we're talking about, you know, driving those efficiency and productivity gains. It's just another, you know, kind of, uh, piece of the puzzle right there to to you know when we're really starting to dive in huh Uva when you're starting to think through the process you know what does it take to make an effective and efficient even inspection right how should a technician move around the vehicle and at, at what uh, you know at each step what should they be observing and doing 
uh, how do we help that technician add a lot of the uh, important elements that the service advisor and eventually the customer is going to need for an understanding from an educational perspective, like canning the notes and putting in the arrows and things like that. And, and the task manager Uva, is kind of an extension of that, uh, you know, uh, thinking behind how do we improve each and every step along this process to make it as, as, as efficient and productive as possible. And uh, so give us a little bit of an insight, if you could, Uva, on how, you know, what was your thinking behind it? Kind of where was the, where did the inspiration come from? And, and, and what problem are you trying to solve? Um, Dustin, if you could um, put the infograph up, it might help a little bit in the explanation. Um, actually, the, I had the epiphany when, I, when we did the chat system and the turbo shops started using it. And so I realized, oh, with the increasing digitization of our communication, everything comes in through a chat or text or an email and not so much through a phone call anymore. And so I thought the interrupts are now still there, but now the system could detect them and interpret them and, and, and tell the service advisor what to do with it. But that was the initial idea. Uh, since everything has now shifted from, you know, yelling across the shop, getting phone calls from customer, to using chat systems within the shop and getting texts and emails from the customer, right? That that was the opportunity, and uh, and then from then on the. I mean, the feedback was incredible from the turbo shops because now everybody thought, oh, I can actually have a central place where all my jobs and tasks in the shop can be managed. And so, so that's how, you know, it, it snowballed to what we, what we implemented. And we added the, the ability to not only have automatic detections of tasks, but also just create your own task. So it's all in one place. And Mike, if you don't mind, I saw from the screenshot Bill shared, you have that pretty well um, dialed in that people use it also for manual tasks, right? Um, so how, how was that process where people, how long did it take to say, okay, I'm not gonna yell across the shop, I'm going to open the task manager and create a manual task instead. Well, you know, when you do something as long as we've been doing them, both the, my ladies in the office have been here over 20 years. Right. The habits are hard to break, but, you know, definitely when, if they see the benefit in it, they're definitely, definitely for it. And they don't like me yelling at them. So that's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to yell anymore. It's okay for them to yell at me, but uh, I'm, I'm fearful whenever it goes the other direction. And, and you know, we, again, we've just got to get customized to the things are a little bit different. Um, and, and it will work. You know, it does work. You just got to stay with it. I really like the manual part better than anything because, you know, I can, a lot of, I think the ones that Bill showed a while ago were mainly ones that, I had put up, remind me to do something. Um, I wanted right. to, to make sure I ordered this part or did that. And it, it doesn't take but a minute, not even that, to just go in there and, and click a couple. Of, you can even copy a lot of it and paste it. And then just put a time to it. And it, it's there in one place. You, know, you don't have to go across your desk to find, well, well, where was that note? And you know, I, how many times have you thrown a note away and had to go back and look for it two or three days? It, it's there. You can look at the ones that have already been completed. They're still stored in a list. So you can go back and say, ah, oh, I did write the wrong number down or they gave me the wrong number or something like that. It's just that I, I think the, the, the opportunities that you can use it are there's so many different ones. And, you know, I've even, I think I've heard Uwe talk about some other things, you know, that it's got in the future, in the future. So I know that he's looking down the road of what else we can do with it. 
No, no, I'm happy to elaborate. I think if you combine the task manager with the workflow ma management system, then you can determine automatic tasks as you move from one workflow step to another, right? And say, send messages to people, customers and, and shop. Um, I mean, this, this is just the beginning of a system which will do the automation needed to save another step. So one example we have here, um, if you could um, scroll down on the um, infograph, right? So if you take the review inspection results as a task, right? There's a step which is called create estimate. So if you create an estimate, the car should be in the estimate state. So what do we do? We move the vehicle automatically into the estimate workflow step. Saves the source advisor another step, right? And, and makes sure tablet and, and TVP are in sync. So the moment you're done with the image editor and the approval of the notes, we know you're done and switched automatically to the create estimate step and move automatically the, the, the vehicle into the estimate workflow step. And, and, and I predict stuff like this, we will be able to add more to the system. So if people forget to move the vehicle, then we can give alerts and give tasks to um, the appropriate service advisor to do something about it. You know, I, I had to share an example yesterday. Uh, it, around here, there's very, they'll finish the car, complete it, and turn it into me to invoice it. And sometimes I won't invoice it right away. And this, the process is after I get it, then it'll go to one of the ladies to call and tell them it's ready. Yesterday we had one where I invoiced it, but I didn't get the, the key and the rest of the, the system to them for them to call the customer. Well, the way the system is set up now, it called the customer and thanked them or actually sent them an email or a text and thanked them for the repair. So, you know, they were on the car. Hey, I see my car is ready. Well, I knew it was ready, but the ladies in the office didn't. So, you know, there's, there's so many opportunities to do like that. What we did was we just changed it to where it'll notify them later in the day, and uh, you, you can you can just see that you know how many times will that may eliminate the step of somebody actually calling them to let them know it's ready, yeah. and and all that's going to tie into the task. You know, it's a, anything's a task if you have to stop and do something, then it's a task, and if you can automate it, that's that much more time or however much time it is, it's going to free up for you to do something else that needs to be done because. Right. Not don't need another task or two. I think we mostly have enough to do, but if you can automate them or cut you know any amount of time, it's going to give you a little more uh, flexibility in it. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, we really that's it. We really want to automate kind of the, you know, the the busy work, right? The manual tasks and and really and then gives you time to celebrate the customer interface and the in the communication and education. Um, so that you're not pinned down just doing busy work all day. Focus on, on that customer relationship and it uh, and reduce the number of tasks that somebody has to do and free that time up for um, you know get more work done. <laughs> That's the name of the game. Do we have? Um, can we Bill? Can we kind of run through just from a, a, of a uh, kind of a how to step by step? for folks that are either in the process of switching, uh, waiting to get onto TVPX or on the list and, and are in the audience here. And, and you know, even folks as they come up uh, and are ready to get on to the new TVPX, kind of a, what are the best practices? You know, you know, you kind of showed us the message came in and he popped the task open, but can you show some of the other abilities maybe to complete? I don't want you to complete any of Mike's tasks, but how they complete <laughs> and how they can reprioritize and some of the ideas from a, just from a operational perspective 
uh, give me a better insight on um, what it's going to look like when it comes out. So let's go ahead and see if I can't share a screen here. And I assume that you can see a today's vehicle page with this on here. Yes, sir. So these are a list of tasks that are in there and basically they're in an order time-wise right now. And just like some other things that we have on the today's vehicle page, you can drag and drop these into different orders and adjust accordingly, or you can force them all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top. Anything that's blue here, this is gonna be a task that was created manually. So as Uwe pointed out earlier, Mike is really on board with going ahead and creating tasks for himself and others. Um, so they're here. And then tasks that are actually for, um, like um, actually most of his are actually manual here. So tasks that are in here that are automated tasks, a service writer as they go through and do the different pieces of the task, it will actually keep track of where they're at. So if it came in and said, um, you know, browse topics or edit pictures or send inspection, as they knock out each one of them things, it's gonna go ahead and clear it and actually move on. And I think, um, I don't know, Mike is actually maybe set up as a production manager, but if he is, I can left click on his name and it will allow him to go and assign them tasks to other people that are in his shop. So Mike had mentioned earlier that he's a the king of delegation. So um, as a product manager, basically he has the ability to see any of the tasks that are coming in there and assign it to anybody accordingly. And so from a service writer's perspective now, would they, would they just open this up when they need to? Would they open it up and kind of dock it? How, how, what's the best practice when it comes to interfacing with that task manager? So for the task manager, for a service writer, they're going to get this ghost chat coming in the bottom here, and that's where they're going to see initially. And if they can't deal with it right then, it's going to be in the task manager. So, you know, to me, it's kind of just like your cell phone. When that doggone thing starts getting a number count in there, you know you've got something that happened you need to know about, and it's just basically a click monitor and then start working down your task list from the top down. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so, um, and then just like we, like you showed, just that easy to reassign. Uh, and, and then, so you're reassigning to, to another service advisor or, uh, you know, back to the production manager potentially, or, or I guess even, uh, Mike, do you have office personnel in there that you're assigning tasks to? Yes, it, it's all capable of doing that. The, the one thing to remember is, you don't use this to assign tasks to the technicians. It right. Kind of, you know, it's it's a separate entity to where, you know, you can segregate it and and leave the task and go do whatever you need to with the particular tile on the technician, and then you can go back to it. Um, it that way, it keeps the technicians from getting involved in the task because you know. I, I don't think they should be involved in the task and the way this is set up, it, it kind of precludes them from it unless you specifically wanted to send it to them. But the capability is there if, if you wanted to. So this is an example where the technician just finished a work order here and basically it comes in and says, go ahead and review the work order. And if a service writer had the opportunity to do it now, it'll be down in this area where they can just click on it and do it now. And basically it'll open up the repair order and said, you know, look down through here, make sure the completions are here. So um, depending on what task comes in here, when it's clicked, it will take you right to the right area. If the service writer doesn't finish it, then it's gonna be up in this area here where they can just click on the task and finish it. So we obviously know that service writer live in a interrupt driven world. And what we want to do is, again, make sure that none of the balls that they're juggling get dropped and be able to go ahead and make sure they can pick up where they left off. And if a task isn't important that they need to do it right now, they can just drag it down the list and put it in, you know, whatever order that they need to. You know, I, I've even been thinking about, you know, you could actually have a separate person or you could just make up you know a a different place to where you could put a priority task you know if, if you wanted to make john doe the one that you know you, you could even separate the tasks that you need to do if you wanted to take it out of your list of everyday stuff like i think you'll see there's one in there that says 
called Magnolia about labs. Well, that's a personal thing. But I thought about if I made a separate Mike Holmes the second, I could move that task over there and, you know, kind of delegate my personal stuff, but still have a list of it. One of the interesting things I talked to a shop owner just the other day about is that because of cloud-based management systems, cloud-based auto vitals, task manager, and all the tools we have, they basically said that I could hire a service writer and they could live in a different part of the country, do everything digitally, never have to appear in my shop, and I don't have to pay to move them. I can get a superstar from anywhere on the planet. So that was a really a pretty interesting observation they come up with. That's pretty, that's, that's, there's some food for thought right there. That's interesting. Well, you remember, I forget what shop it was, but they had the guy that got the back surgery and he set him up and he, he operated for during his recovery period from a bed in his house. And if I remember yeah. right, they said his productivity was much higher because he didn't <laughs> have all the people stopping by and chatting with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, I'll be a little quieter when you say that because my secretaries are listening to that and they'll probably tell me to start staying home. <laughs> stay in bed, buddy. Just stay in bed. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, technology. So, so Uba, what about from a from a, a goals and a metric perspective? What should we be looking at to see that you know, a that the task manager is kind of being adopted, but but it's having that kind of promised uh, result is to say it's going to improve efficiency and productivity and it should boost revenue, yeah. So, so from a so first, I think the monitoring aspect is important. Meaning, the production manager, whoever is in that role, often the shop owner, can see all tasks assigned to everybody, and as Mike said, reassign if he sees um, a discrepancy. Right, somebody is completely behind, and there is no catching up then you better, you see how, how late they are in the task manager, Bill showed that earlier, and then and reassign, right? So that's a monitoring on the fly in real time. What we will add in the BCP is the ability to see average tasks finished per time per service advisor. So you, you can actually measure productivity uh, KPI. So this way, you know whether they are um, as productive as you expect them to be. I hope this makes sense. Yeah, no, it's totally yeah, very, very interesting because then you can also do a comparison if you've got multiple riders you yes. can compare. And then I think work backwards, right, and find the bottleneck, find the reason. Is it is it really just, you know, because most of the time it's not, I'm just lazy. It's I've I'm, I'm, I've got too much pressure over here or, you know, overworked or, or, or too many interrupts for whatever reason. Uh, and then you can kind of work that back and see how that affects that productivity and then find another solution. Uh, delegate, reprioritize or change your process altogether, like uh, what Mike was saying, and find ways you can just eliminate that task through an automation um, altogether. And a lot of times I gotta tell you is that those automations or those um task reduction best practices are kind of already built into your digital shop operating process uh and so if, if anything especially for you guys that are kind of self-guided you just learned it on your own and you made it work and fits in your operation there's there's kind of a bigger kind of umbrella out there at least take a look at it go on to the help dot auto vitals take a look at the digital shop operating process look to see uh how that kind of fits together Talk about it on Facebook. Go onto the Facebook forum. There's plenty of discussion threads on there about how people have done things like introduce the production manager or simply just follow some of the best practices as a first step to get you on the road to uh, developing kind of that task uh, reduced process. And then that frees you up for a lot more uh, benefit uh and and also kind of puts the hair out you know the the hair fires out and service advisors tend to have a more pleasant day uh like their job better and there's nothing wrong with that so <laughs> do you so agree you're... Mike? tom you touched on that word interruptions um i i'm probably the worst whenever i think of something and i want to get talk to one of the service advisors 
I don't mean to interrupt them, but if I don't get that to them and convey it to them right then, I'm liable to forget it or get oh, sidetracked or railroaded. And, you know, if you stand there and tell them something and you're interrupting them, they've lost their train of thought or whatever they were doing to where if you can just put it on a task, send it to the task and, you know, they can look at it when it's convenient for them. Uh, they may even can glance at it right then and say, uh, he's just, you know, don't worry about it. I'll get to it later. Did They're going to be much more productive by not having to follow through that interruption. It, you know, just just my nature is usually whenever I think of something and go in there, they, they know that I'm going to say it and, uh, and interrupt them because I've got something else I need to move on to. And, and if I can train myself to not do that interruption, I, I can just see the benefit that they're not going to get held up, forget about something or, you know, lose their train of thought. You know, even if they're talking to somebody on the phone, sometimes they're talking and I can hear what they're saying. And I will try to intercede a little bit of information. Mm. And whenever they're trying to listen to me also, you, you can see that, they've lost their train of thought or they're not giving that full attention to that, that person, whoever they're talking to, to, if they're sitting in front of the screen and they see that, you know, they, they can glance at it and keep on going. That is going to be my biggest goal right now is to try to try to go in that direction. Cause the mean, interruptions is the number one, number one distraction we have. No, that's a, that's a great, that's a, that's an interesting idea, right? Is to be able to, to do some, uh, you know, more subtle communication when necessary and, and give some some support and some tips and hints. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's a priority for you to get it downloaded, right? And to get it on the paper or to communicate it. But a lot of times from an operational perspective, it might not be a priority. Matter of fact, it might be better suited in your next upcoming shop meeting. And so what a great way to start to put some topics together for your shop meeting. Can you put a due date of Friday or whenever you have your shop meetings and you start to compile some topics and they're in there and now you've got an easy place to reference those. You can get your uh, management team and your service writers or, or whoever has access to that also to review and prepare and contribute and add their feedback in preparation of that meeting. Um, and you can also use that to just compile things that you don't wanna slip through the cracks need to get it down and, and make it important. It's just not important to take an action on immediately. And so we, we address those as a team uh, late, you know, later in the, uh, in the week. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. We've got some to that off to you and you do with it what you will. We have a lot of tools on the Today's Vehicle page that are all about solving problems now before it becomes history. So the red, yellow, green bars is an example. You know, make money while you can and uh, and so the task manager and the communication with the red number count in there is the same thing solve the problem now before it becomes a problem so monitoring that today's vehicle page and, and using the tools that are put there to make your life easier and make sure nothing gets missed is is the number one line of defense i would say and then using the business control panel for kpis that are there now or things that are in the future you're looking at history but you can use the trends over time to see, are you going in the right direction or not? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great point because that, and it really is. It's, it's in the inside of the business control panel. It's going to show you which metric you need to influence to improve the direction you want to go and get to the number you're looking to get to. And then those tools exist. It, you know, you might not be using them now. You might be using them in a, in a, in a, you know, not optimal way. But uh, at least now you're on the right track and you know what you need to focus on. And then, you know, get in touch with your advisor. We're here to help. Um, they're all, you know, uh, ready and highly competent. And they've, they've, they've been through these same experiences with other shops that are looking to achieve the same goals. Uh, and they can help you get it, uh, you know, instead of trial and error, they can put you on a pretty direct path to success. Uh, so, so get a hold of them, you know, make sure you bring it up in your next check-in right there in the BCP. You can assign them a task, just like we're talking about in the task manager. You have that ability inside of your business control panel as well 
to assign tasks to both your auto vitals uh, advisor as well as your business coach if you've got them invited in there as well uh, and they can do the same uh, back and so you know again it's just a really you know knowing that the tools are there but then putting them into your process as a best practice and using those tools to really like Mike didn't have said it any better it, it allows him to just download that stuff and make it important, get it into process and into production. You know, people are communicating about it and it's top of mind now and in their uh, heads also, but without the tap on the shoulder that kind of hits the brakes on their, their thinking, right? To Mike said it so eloquently. And then now they're out of focus and we don't want to do that. So what a great way to communicate uh, when, you know, when they're uh, available and ready to consume that information and then give you that feedback and keep that uh, kind of that project communication moving forward. Always with that, uh, you know, your eye on the end result mm -hmm. goal uh, and that team collaboration helps everybody get there together. So Mike, if I may, um, you mentioned you can already think about other features and I also would like uh, the audience, I see John is in the, uh, audience is using the task manager. Uh, if you could um, share with us what you see in the future as the biggest uh, benefit, what's missing today, we should add. Hmm. I, I started thinking about that a while ago, and I think you probably were thinking about the same thing is uh, say we're going to have a shop meeting or something that you could have a separate category or task or section in this to where you could go in and put that thought down. Um, maybe even have it to where you, like I said, have something where you, you know, your personal task, your, your honeydew list or, or whatever, to where you can segregate things to where, okay, this is the part of the task, uh, the task that I'm going to use for the business or uh, you could even have a, maybe a, a list, a task list to where you could list things of shop, things that need to be done at the shop to where one of your other people could pick that shop repair list, shop maintenance list up or something, more, kind of a to-do list. Okay. And uh, there again, where it, it's one stop because, you know, as Bill said, if you can pull something from the cloud from your house or from your test drive in the car or some way that it can be integrated like that, I can see where that would be a great benefit. So it should be integrated with Google Calendar or your personal Google Calendar, for example? It, you know, I, I'm not that familiar with Google Calendar because I, I always use Wonderlist. And, you know, I see. they went away with earlier. So, oh, I see he's stuffed his face with shrimp curry. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, see, I lost my train of thought. Because I, <laughs> yeah, you needed a task. Should have put it down. <laughs> Barry Buck, Barry Buck in the audience, the uh, diary and, um, you know, Outlook style calendar. So kind of along those same lines um, right. that, that we were just discussing there. John Long said he's too busy stuffing his uh, face with uh, shrimp curry to to answer you. So so maybe that might be an integration is that you can, uh, you know, integrate into your favorite takeout joints and uh, just order your shrimp curry direct for delivery right from your today's vehicle page. Well, you can make it reoccurring too, you know, once every <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wednesday at June. <laughs> that, that, I, I was on Amazon trying to get some drinks for the guy and the only way you could buy it was make it reoccurring. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Just keep them coming, bartender. Um what about parts? What about um are we pulling a task automatically that says order parts that if I have a parts you know, department or a parts ordering role that they would get that um, uh, directly. Yeah, with the parts, I mean, we, we don't have today a parts management feature, which is on the list where you can basically manage tablet and TVP, whether the parts have arrived, have been used as a core return, blah, 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 all that. Um, and, and then you can attach tasks to it. Um, Man. So I've seen quite a few people talking about the reoccurring tasks. So order, um, you know, do your stock order on a Monday morning or, you know, yep. have your weekly uh, meeting on a certain day and time. So 
a task that can go ahead and be reoccurring is that when you finish one, it automatically creates the next one. Um, I've had quite a few people talk about that. Um, I don't know if it's actually made it to our feature list, but that was one thing that um, I've heard quite often. Yeah, is there the ability for like team task, which would be attend shop meeting or you know show up at noon for shrimp curry? Yeah, okay, that, that's a good one. Which always then is going to be split into an individual <laughs> task, right, for everybody. Yeah, sure. But tasks right now don't go to the technicians. That would be more of a, a group chat message. Hmm. Is do you see a direction of integrating the task into the group chat, or would it? Is that something that that may be beneficial to where? You could set a task and it automatically. Then you get a reminder, a, a reminder in the chat. Yeah. That, 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 I like that idea a lot. So if you set a manual task, it should create a chat. If you, whereas for the automatic task, it's the other way around. The chat creates the task, right? For manual tasks, it should be a reminder. Right. Yep. I like that. How about uh, how about out in the audience? Anybody, uh, you know, you John, can join. John agrees with task to groups. Um, it's a little tedious today. What would be a typical group task um, if you guys could Clean give me some examples? <laughs> there you go, right there. That was uh, <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> If you need a task to get lunch, something is odd. I think a, a, a quick group chat would make that happen. Yeah, come help to push a car, John. That's yeah, a, that's, another, that's another all hands on deck. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Be, yeah, put, let's put out the fire by the compressor. That's not good. The oily, the oily rag bucket's on fire. Oops. Everybody. But here's my, <laughs> I, I want to challenge you a little bit. A task is something you not forget. Isn't the group chat enough for those type of things? Yeah, in, in general. And it would be because you, you want to in, include the text. But, um, you know, just. You, you could just it. create a group chat and say, hey, guys, clean shop. I, I'm Don't thinking about the task is to remind me to send that group text. Oh, I see. <laughs> I, I, I know another good one. I know another good one. What about pushing sales drivers? Reminder to offer some, right. you know, specific, uh, the financing or the warranty or whatever it might be uh, as, you know, just kind of reminders to your sales team. Yeah, long-term <laughs> calendar events, which then trigger a task maybe the day before and then on the same day. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just reinforcement of, you know, uh, some some objectives, you know. Right. And customize them, you know, make them as customizable as necessary so that, you know, don't forget to upsell the, you know, the windshield wiper blades or, or <laughs> whatever it is. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, there's so, so many possibilities in, and actually need in areas for movement and kind of how you know the traditional communication and processes it's 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 funny you know i've been in shops it's almost like the wild west you know you get a completely different experience standing on this side of the counter than you do on that side of the counter and it's kind of interesting how that can develop because they seem to be pretty close together and you know going to the new tpx is very similar to that it's all the same but it's different you know it's the benefits, just the task, is enough to warrant changing. And, and I know, you know, that we we may not even supposed to touch on it, but there's so many other improvements and things in the TPX that it's just it's a time saver in itself. Just with the other things that are in there, um, you can you can spend more time on it. But once you get it set up, integrated as the task, you know you. The task will even remember your top 10 tasks, so you can keep, you know, you don't have to keep repeating them. You can just select them. Right. 
you know, I, I think that was one thing that the turbo guys, a lot of them had asked for is, you know, one time in the old chat, you know, you had the chats that they saved. you could make, you know, predetermined chats where you didn't have to type it every time. And you know, that that's where that came from, where the, it saves the top 10 and you can just, you know, you don't have to retype it. You just copy it and keep on going. Yeah. So we should, maybe should go ahead and touch on a little bit of some of the stuff that we used to force in the past. We now go ahead and, and don't force that anymore. We create a task if it doesn't get done. So Uwe, you might want to talk about that a little bit for some of the shops that are changing. Oh, that's a great point, Bill. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So <clears throat> I don't know whether you guys remember, but um, we had a very busy Facebook forum discussion on the day when we started prompting pop-ups to service advisors and said, review this inspection sheet, right? Hell broke loose. So in our attempt to help, you know, service advisors felt intruded, interrupted, whatever you want to call it. And, um, and what's funny is in the meanwhile, so many people have gotten used to it. That's just another way it is. Yep. Right. Change of habit. You, kind knew of thing. All along. you knew that that was going to happen all along. We just have to get from A to B. Right. And, but there are indeed uh, circumstances under which in, and implicitly popping up, pop up is just a nuisance and you just want to click it away because it doesn't fit in your time schedule. So we thought, okay, let's make it different. Instead of forcing people to do something, we just remind them immediately through the task manager chat, there's something for you to do and remind again through the task manager at the top of the screen um, that, you, that you do that. Right? So instead of forcing now somebody to now decide which inspection sheet needs to be reviewed and you cannot leave this thing other than unchecking the inspection sheet and maybe not sending it, right? we are now reminding people. That's the most um, direct example where we took out forcing people to do something, service advisors in particular. Instead, we replace it with a strong reminder and another reminder later if it's if it has not been done. So that's the whole uh, underlying um, concept also for the ta task manager. Freedom, baby, freedom. Yes. Bill, do you want to add anything? Uh, no. So, well, yeah, I do actually. So, you know, in the past, you know, when you move something from the no tech column to assign it to a technician, you got a pop-up. That's going to be there because that's required. But maybe later on, after you get an approval from a customer and it's going to go to the same technician, we don't show that box anymore. But if it's going to a different technician and it's not assigned, then that's when a task is going to be created. So there's a couple times where we used to have pop-ups that said, do this now. We want to make sure that a shop, it depends on their configuration, but we want to make sure that they know that, you know, there's if a task is created to make sure they do it because it might be to go ahead and assign those jobs to a technician so they get to working on it and they didn't have that box now but and they didn't follow that there's a red number there that says come tap on me you know do something with it so we want to make sure nothing gets forgot that way also so follow them number counts and make sure you do use them good point yeah And so, Bill, how do these people get a hold of this awesome new tool? Well, the best thing to do is go ahead and, and talk with their trainer about it. And the trainer will go ahead and ask them some questions to verify, you know, is do they have the right monitors? Are their tablets right? And so on. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to go ahead and send them a link that says, hey, watch this video so you can learn about the changes from standard to TVPX. And then they're going to go ahead and give you a link to a demo shop. You need to go into that demo shop and go through and do some of the things you just learned on the video. Go ahead. It's going to create a repair order for you. You're going to open that repair order up. You're going to do some editing. You're going to, um, you know, go through and do what you need. Send it to yourself. Look and see how it looks and use the guided help that's built into the tool. So yeah. after you, they can verify that everything is set to go, 
then they'll get back with you. They'll set a launch date for you and you get an email with your welcome codes and it's time to go to work on, on the new, um, you know, highly advanced um, system. But not in a scary advanced way. No, nope. it's actually, you know, everything that they've, it, to me, it's like, you know, in, in a shop, you know, you got this scan tool with a lab scope built into it you've used for 10 years. You know, you need to update and you know, it's going to be better when you update, but you're going to do the same job with a different tool that's brand new. There's going to be some things that are different, but you'll get used to it really quick. And there's huge benefits of just diving in there and getting it done. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Most of the stuff that you've been doing, you know, a uh, long time and it's all the same, just different shades of colors. Um, there are some new things and there's plenty of, um, you know, videos and episodes like this out there to help you. But like Bill said, we've got the uh, the training wheel environment in there, right? You can get in there and try to break it and push the buttons and, and just see how everything functions and, and do your normal tasks. And you can rotate your staff through there so they get an experience in there as well. And they know what to expect when they get their uh, switch done. And uh, just like that, you're ready to operate Monday morning. And to help being built right into the tool, you know, you hit the blue question mark, you don't know something, hover over it and read it. If that don't be enough, hit the blue question mark, hover over it again to learn more. So it's built right into the tool. You don't have to go looking for anywhere else to get the information from. Yeah. Hey, Mike, uh, how's that working for you guys? Are, are you guys... You know, are they using the guided help? Are they are they interacting in the tool um, through those through those features? And what's the feedback that they're giving you uh, about that stuff? Oh, looks like we got Mike muted. There we go. Hey, you know, the guided feature once we get it fully implemented, it's going to make the most consistency of anything that I think all the vitals has done. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's retraining your text, but it's going to make everything, you know, one, two, three, four. There's not going to be opportunities to deviate too much. Um, we've gotten the most pushback from that. I probably need to be done sure. because you know how texts are. They, they're good. They weren't done their way. But the, the opportunity to have that consistency is going to make it a lot easier for the service advisors. The, the issue that we're running into right now, and I'll just be honest, we're so busy, we're booking so far ahead, we're skeptical about getting additional work that needs to be done because a lot of the people say when they see it that way, they want to do it now, and we don't have time to do it. Wow. So we're, we're trying to work through that. But I, I think the guided is going to be one of the biggest improvements as far as the inspections. And, and you, can, you can just see the number of clicks that it's going to reduce. I think there was a count where it reduced your clicks by 100. Yeah. And even during one of our discussions, it was challenged by one of the other turbo shops and uh, we went through the process and there's a lot of clicks it reduced. Um, it's very well set up already, but it's also tweakable. And, you know, that's the stage we're at is we want to tweak it a little bit because we want to make it ours. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to work through that. But uh, there'll, there'll come a day when I'll Monday morning, guys, this is where you're going to do it. I don't care. You're going to do it this way. <laughs> if you stick with it, I, the benefit is going to be tr tremendous. But my plan is to wait until it slows down a little bit. And we get past all of the, you know, the business of this time of year. That's my personal thought. And I think some of the people that have made that commitment will, will reassure that and reaffirm it. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's to your point, right? It's teaching the old dogs some new tricks, but boy, those new tricks are fun sometimes, you know. And we've had several of those shops, we, you know, the feedback is exactly that is, oh man, they push back and they didn't want to, then I kind of force it. Now they won't turn it off right now because they, because like you said, it's a lot less clicks, it clicks. it's much more uh, efficient. They, they, they get it done quicker and, and more consistent. It saves time at the counter as well with the edits. Uh, and once you kind of see that, uh, that dynamic, it's an easy decision. 
Um, and we have, you know, on the other side of that too is the help. Are you guys hitting that blue question mark and going in and using the kind of the help uh, notes and videos in there so that they get comfortable with the layout of the TVPX? I'm sorry, were you asking me or? Yeah, I'm sorry, Mike. I thought you were muted. <laughs> they brought that other screen up and it, see it distract me when they brought that screen up about Poland. So I was reading the- Oh, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think maybe some of the discussion was not, but- uh, Yeah, I was asking you about that little blue question mark, you know, because we got two kind of versions, right? The guided is gonna walk you through doing a perfect inspection every time, but, the, but then the help, the onboard help is a really a great tool, especially when you first get switched over to the TVPX. Yeah, you're gonna go through the demo stuff, but you're probably gonna miss some stuff and then have some questions. Well, you, you simply click that blue question mark, it turns it into help mode. Now, when you hover over or click, oh, if we can just put, uh, Dustin, if you can put Bill's screen, uh, full screen, he's gonna show a little walkthrough here. Um, you're right. There that's it's very quick easy and you're only looking for where you're stumped at that time yeah, so you exactly. just scroll through to find you know it builds the ship yeah so this is the this on off toggle switch and then whatever you want to know about you just hover over the top of it it's got the information there if you want to learn more about it you click here it goes into more information you can go ahead and rate it tell us you know whether that solved your problem or not and if it didn't go deep enough please go ahead and come down in here and put a note here and saying, hey, I really need to know more about this and here's why. And we'll not only update it for you, but we'll update it for everybody else. So um, there's any place you go and see this question mark in here, it's an on-off toggle switch. So, you know, first line of defense is hover over something and get the, the tooltip feedback. If that's not enough, go ahead and click on the blue question mark, hover over it and get the information and keep going from there. So it's just built into the tool so you don't have to go looking for it or phone a friend or anything else yeah i found myself i have to be careful when i go to look at one particular issue as i'm going back with the cursor to turn it off i'll see something that i didn't know it would do that or i see an explanation i didn't so i'm stopping i'm in that rabbit hole of you know, <laughs> different things so I, I i have to be very uh very conscious that i need to look at this one item and get back to what i was doing but, uh, <laughs> Well, that's great. No, that's a, that's a that's a great testimonial to to the effectiveness of that because you know, um, as you all know, you know, there's a lot of functionality inside of Auto Vitals, and a lot of times you think you know, you know, you're, and it's working well for you, and you're using it, and it's awesome. But boy, it does a lot more, and you find that stuff, and so it it wouldn't hurt just go through and kind of click once you get it in your hands, go through and read all the help stuff, and and. Um, you know, to, to Mike's point is that it allows you to go right to what you need help with right now, instead of sitting and watching some 30 minute video where you just remember like 15 minutes, uh, seconds of it, I should say, right. And then you have to watch it again, uh, or try to scroll through some video to find a spot. And uh, how frustrating that is you go straight to the information that you need and, and you get it like that. And it gives you the ability. So for everybody who went out there and said, well, we need more training. And if they would have this in the training, it would have been so much better. Well, now you get to leave us that feedback and then uh, we'll get right in there and update that and incorporate it. If it makes any sense, you know, if your feedback is worth the, uh, the digits it was written in. No, just kidding. Of course, your feedback is important to us. Um, but we will implement it into there. So it'll help other people uh, through that help functionality as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whenever me and Bill are talking, he'll, you know, if you have him on the phone for an hour, you're actually drinking through the fire hose. You sure are. He, he's got so much knowledge and, you know, he, he, he does it repetitive. So he, he knows what works and that's what he's going to tell you. You can't remember it all, but sometimes you'll be looking for something and you'll remember that help button and you can go there. And because he's probably showed it to you that way. You can go back to it and then it'll reinforce or remind you of, of what you did. And after you have to do that two or three times, it's just second nature. You know, you could you could be, you know, using it for your service advisors or whoever you're trying to uh, to school up on those items. 
So yep. I normally start out every phone call with, remember this should be quizzed at a later date, either by me or somebody else. So um, having it in a tool is good. So my big takeaway on this is, is to go and be proactive rather than reactive. Use that today's vehicle page, you know, not only on the red, green, and yellow bars, but look at them number counts in there and make sure you manage them and keep them down. That way, instead of letting fires flare up where you got to rebuild that relationship with the customer or vendors or whatever, everything is just right there ready to go. Yeah. No, and that's really, that's kind of the trifecta right there. You know, you drink through the fire hose with Bill, you use the task manager to put down the highlights and the things that you know that you need to learn more about or, or, or take an action on. And then you get into that help functionality to figure out what the heck Bill was talking about and how it, how it relates to you and, and what you do about it. <laughs> and then you give him feedback through there. So, you know, about, or as a matter of fact, when the next check-in, while he's berating you for not doing it the Bill way, then you can go in and say, well, you know, that online help or the uh, onboard help should have had this additional information in there. And then he can get in there and update it for you. Maybe Bill could send a task and put it on my task manager form. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's, that's another good one. Uh, maybe, we good one. The, maybe we should take the task from the BCP, BCP? and put them in the task. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was just going to say. Mm -hmm. Now that would be the uh, that would be the evil genius mad scientist um, connection that we need right there is to be able to push that BCP task and data directly into the task manager uh, and and direct it of course with permission at the individual roles uh, and not just the implementer. Well, gosh, it's top the hour. Sorry, guys. Um, Real quick, I want to get what Tony's saying. Tony Funnenberg says, TVPX is amazing, but when converting it, it's important to let new users know that there could be issues with integration with their point of sale. We experienced a lot of frustration with text not getting tiles. Uh, yeah, and so and that's part of it too, uh, to Bill's point, um, what you need to do to get it done is make sure that your point of sale is supported. Uh, we're kind of ramping it out by point of sale as we go and you know, in there working with Mike and the other turbo shops and, and those folks that are switching over to uh, identify those those areas and make sure that we get the transition as smooth as possible and the functionality 100% uh, right out of the gate so that uh, you get a great uh, experience on the on the transition there and you get to take advantage of uh, you know those additional power and, and speed that's built in performance just in the new platform as well as the added functionality and features. Uh, that we've been discussing uh, today. Mikey, I can't thank you much, buddy, uh, enough for coming on and sharing that with us, how much work you guys are doing from a turbo perspective and really helping everybody out there, uh, you know, uh, by working with Bill and Uva and Carlo and everybody uh, to, to get that uh, functionality built in and, and, and ready for the masses. And, um, you know, and, and, and thank you again also for coming on the show and, and sharing that with us. Uh, it, it's great to have you on and, 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 and to see you, you know. Uh, looking forward to seeing you soon, buddy. Hope we have that conference again and, uh, and you're coming out. Oh, that's my pleasure. You know, you're welcome to come to Florida. You see the beach, so. Uh, Man, I know, buddy. I wish I was on a plane. <laughs> uh, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, it's <laughs> no, nice and warm over there. Like here. It's been gloomy here. I don't like it. I want to get in the sun. I'm losing my tan. I'm just pink. I look like a shaved hamster. Um, well, semi-shaved hamster. <laughs> Bill, as always, all of your uh, you know help and uh, your mastery is critical for uh, and you know it's helping a lot of folks and preparing them for uh, uh, you know the TVPX uh, switch. And Uba, welcome back, buddy. Welcome back from your uh, your Yosemite whitewater rafting experience. Glad you survived so that you can continue to bring um, the rest of that genius plan to fruition. Um, thank you for coming on the show, buddy. Thank you. Dustin, as always, you are awesome. Thank you very much for manning the behind the scenes. He's like doctor. He's like uh, the, the Wizard of Oz back there behind the curtain. And tune in next Wednesday, same time, same place. Uh, we're going to do it again. And uh, if you've got any suggestions or there's anything specific solutions you want us to talk about or you want to come on the show, reach out to us and let us know. Uh, until then, make sure you get registered so you get the um, uh, notifications 
uh, and subscribe to, and you get the, uh, uh, the recording sent to you directly. Um, we'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks again. Bye all.